Okay, we'll call to order the regular meeting of the Batavia City Council for Monday, January 6, 2020. I'd ask that you all please rise for a brief invocation to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Tonight, as the uh, City Council meets in our first uh, regular meeting of 2020, we just want to make recognition of the many successes that were experienced in uh, 2019, specifically the dynamic uh, success that we had with our access toy distribution uh, program under the leadership of the Baileys and the Dubuses. And we also want to recognize the outstanding work that was done by both Main Street and the Chamber of Commerce in helping to promote the sound holiday message and all the decorations that were done throughout our community. Uh, we really made Batavia shine and sparkle this season, and I think that certainly the sentiments of the people certainly spoke to their appreciation for the great way that this town looked and acted and behaved as it went about the holiday season. We are thankful for this tremendous spirit of uh, giving and love and expressions of support for one another that we experience in Batavia on an ongoing basis. And we just ask that if there's a true blessing out there that we are able to carry forth this sentiment in the years ahead. Tonight, we want to remember those from our community who are serving on foreign soil in defense of the liberties of the United States of America. And in this time of troubling international tensions, we just ask that this very special blessing be shined upon them and all other men and women from our country who are working so hard to protect the liberties of, us, of our country. Tonight we ask for uh, vision and understanding and uh, creativity as we act on the items of business before us, knowing that in our hearts and minds, each member of the council is here to do what in their own sense is the best interest of this community. We ask for all these blessings, amen. Uh, Alderman Miller, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Ask the city clerk to please call the roll. Miller. Here. Rosado. Here. Beck. Here. Knopp. Here. Chancet. Here. Wolf. Here. Barron. Here. O'Brien. Here. Callahan. Here. Meitzler. Here. Malay. Here. Ewer. Here. Cerrone. Here. McFadden. Here. And let the record reflect that all 14 members of the city council are present and accounted for, so we obviously have the necessary quorum to conduct business. Moving then to item number four, which is a reminder to everybody that if you're going to speak to us tonight or specifically to the members of the council, that everyone please use the microphone in front of them because we do televise this and if we don't use the mics, it's very difficult for people in the television audience to hear us. Uh, also, uh, I moved to item five, which are to be items to remove, added or changed on the agenda. Alderman I'm not aware of any. Nothing? One thing I would like to change, because I know we got some people in the audience who are under some, some time constraints, I'd like to move item 12, which is the Batavia Access Toy Drive report by Roy Bailey, up to the right before item 7, if that's okay with the council. All right. Uh, somebody make a motion to approve the so consent? So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Chancet, second by Alderman Metzler for the approval of the agenda as amended. Any discussion? Kirk, call the roll, please. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Millay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Motions approve uh, 14 yes, no no's, none absence. Moving then to item number six, which is presentation of the consent agenda. Alderman Chancet. Uh, Your Honor, the consent agenda reads as follows. Approvals, the December 27th, 2019 payroll in the amount of $885,401. The accounts payable check register in the amount of $3,746,754.80. Resolution 19-116-R, approving task order number two with Siemens for an amount not to exceed $36,384 to perform equipment testing at the McKee substation. And Resolution 20-2-R, an agreement with Kane County for Animal Control Services. Uh, Your Honor, I move that we approve the consent agenda as read. Second. second. Move by Alderman Chanza, second by Alderman Knapp for the approval of the consent agenda as presented. Any discussion? 
Clerk call the roll. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Millay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. Consent agenda is approved by a vote of 14 yes, no no's, none absent. Okay, then per action of our earlier motion, I would like to recognize Mr. Bailey. If he would come up and uh, give us a report. Or the whole gang, I guess, all of you. <laughs> I just want to say when Roy and Rudy and all those who are making up here are to the podium, to this year's was a tremendous success, and we have our thanks to all to these folks for putting this together. Uh, we had a huge crowd up there, and they had this whole thing standing tall, and several of you came by. I appreciate those of you who did on the morning or early afternoon of the distribution. And if there was a moment during the year when Batavia shows its true spirit of love and giving and really shines, uh, this is the day, and this year we really did. So I really am very proud of everything that we accomplished and all the people that were serviced. And uh, Batavia had, I think, a joyous Christmas in most households thanks to the work of these folks. So, Roy? Good evening, Mayor, and good evening, Council, and good evening, Batavia. Uh, kind of thankful that you've asked us to come out tonight and, and tell you a little bit of what happened at the Toy Drive this year. Uh, I got a couple of folks here that's going to help me with this. Uh, I've been traveling. And I have another meeting directly after this tonight at 8.30. So kind of broke it up into three sections here. I'm going to have Rudy uh, give the thanks to all the people that supported us along the way. And then I'm going to ask my daughter, who's been really uh, supportive of the program, her and my wife and, and Marilyn, uh, doing a lot of work out there. So I'm going to show some pictures of all of the folks that came in and helped us put the toy drive together. We're going to show you pictures of what those volunteers put together for the community. We're going to show you what the pictures look like after everybody shopped. And I'll, they're telling me I have two minutes to do a closing. So uh, <laughs> just letting you know how that all works. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little bit windy when I'm talking in front of a crowd of of salespeople, so uh, they already told me that they're going to pull the chain on me and, and take me off the stage here. So, uh, with that, I'm going to ask Rudy to come up and thank some of the folks that really supported us. Thanks, Roy. Um, as Roy said, we had a lot of people that we need to thank. And uh, start off, we'd like to thank. BEI TV Enterprises. We'd like to thank the mayor, Karen Morley, Batavia Fire Department, Kevin, and the, all the city workers, Batavia Clothes Closet, Matt and Lori Holm and his students, Megan Owens and the Geneva High School girls soccer team, Janet Meeks and Amy Kasmer from the Geneva High School OJT. English classes, Roger Bryce and his bowling league, Batavia High School Volleyball Banquet, Batavia Mothers Club, Dr. Chris Sidelko, Calvary Episcopal Church, Funway, Oswego Explorers, Batavia Community Members, Hills Family, the Rotolo Middle School, Hoover Wood School, H.C. Storm School, Alice Gustafson School, Dottie Fletcher. She put on an uh, incredible um, comedy show for us. Aldi's, Laura Newman, Batavia Police Department, all the council members, Holy Cross Church, Batavia Food Pantry, Moose Heart, Kelly Hesselbaum and the Geneva High School Social Group, Geneva High School Speech Team, Batavia Youth Football Turkey Bowl, Carl's Complete Auto Repair, the Kosick Family, Bethany Lutheran Church, 
Batavia Public Library, Key Foods, Batavia Women in Business, Lions Club, the Cretney Family, J.B. Nelson School, Louise White School, Karen Sullivan and the Holy Cross Preschool, Batavia High School, and the Batavia High School football team. And I'd also like to add uh, Roy and Jeannie Bailey and Brittany and A.J. Cole did a great job for us this year also. We greatly appreciate all the help that we've gotten from the community, and we uh, hope that we get that type of support again next year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Rudy. Uh, I need to add a couple more people to that thank you list. Uh, that being uh, my grandson, Darian Cole, and his, his dad, AJ, and uh, representative that from time to time has stepped around and, and, and showed his support, my son, Steve. So I want to make sure we mention those. Uh, at this point in time, I'm going to ask my daughter to come up and show you, uh, first of all, some of those volunteers and how they put this whole program together because, believe it or not, my family and, and the Dubases are, are not able to do this without the help. As you heard on here t tonight from, from Rudy, uh, many, many organizations stepped up and helped us. Not only the organizations and the community the stores, but I think you heard that Geneva name. Uh, they also stepped up and was here supporting us every night to stop by not knowing that they're ever going to get toys from us, not that they're going to ever support any child in Geneva, but they felt the need to stop in and take care of a family here in Batavia that would have a Merry Merry Christmas. Brittany? Let's show them the volunteers. Let's show them the before, what it looked like, and definitely let's show them what it's after. Brittany? Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys some of the uh, people that we had come and help out. So, um, we had the uh, football team that came and brought all the stuff that the high school had collected. Um, this is the uh, Geneva on-the-job training program. Part of the reason that Geneva comes to help, too, is because uh, I work at Geneva. So I talk about the program a lot, and then people want to come help. My mom works there, too. We both talk about it a lot. So then people are like, oh, can we bring kids to come help? And um, we don't turn them down. So uh, this is the on-the-job training program that came. Uh, this is Kelly Hesselbaum and her group that came. Uh, this is the speech team that came. Uh, this is the soccer team from Geneva that came, and their head coach, Megan Owens, lives here in town, so um, she came multiple nights to come help as well. Uh, this is Kehi Foods that came to help us. Uh, Kehi. Uh, Moose Heart donated a ton of toys to us, so that was them coming to drop them off. And then this is the day of. These are all of our volunteers that we had the day of, so you can see we had a full house there. Our before pictures, uh, our books, games, puzzles room. This is our three to five boys room. Uh, this is part of our six to 12 when we were just getting things set up. Uh, so this is kind of uh, as we're setting things up. So we separate everything to try to put together the packages. So that's um, as we're going to do that. Uh, this is our family room. A lot of this stuff here comes from Aldi. Uh, they're terrific as far as donations for us. So this allows the family to get a gift or two as well. Uh, this is a part of our three to five boys room. This is our uh, six to 12 girls. It's our hats and gloves wall. Uh, this is our infant room. This is our teen boys. Teen girls. And then there's all of our volunteers again for the day of. <clears throat> and then our after pictures. This is what our games look like after. 
Uh, this is three to five boys after. That's six to 12 boys after. That's the family after. This is three to five girls after. Six to 12 girls after. Infants after. Teen boys after. Teen girls after. Um, my dad doesn't even know this, but uh, the um, night of Christmas Eve, and I wasn't supposed to say anything. My mom told me not to. But uh, on Christmas Eve, we got an email from a family that said they had just received their letter. Um, so secretly, when we were supposed to be delivering cookies, uh, my mom and I went and delivered toys to somebody on Christmas Eve. So we do make sure that everybody does get something, um, regardless of, you know, if they're eligible, we make sure they get it. So we have pictures even after that. Um, because we went shopping that day and then brought the gifts to them. So thank you guys for all that you guys do for us. <laughs> wow, thanks. Let me just say that uh, you got more than two minutes because I'm not going to run the risk of a lightning strike coming out. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Mayor. You've been in the same house all that I've been in. So. Uh, I guess tonight, I guess I kind of feel like a band director. Uh, did that many, many years ago. And I'm thinking about starting out my Coliseum or wherever I'm going to start this. And it started with BEI and the city here having a place for me to host my concert. And as I look across the beginning of this with Dottie Fletcher starting the program out with uh, a, a program that she started to, to make money for us out at Mooseheart. And it was very successful. Then I look at the second part of my band and I look at all of the schools that represented and gave toys and gave gift cards and whatever not. And then I look across my band here and I see uh, all of the store people that donated toys. I look across here in my band and I see another community that said Batavia is going to have a Merry Christmas for all their, their children and all the families. I can remember Mayor one afternoon stopping down here and looking to pick up a check or a gift card. And I was walking out of this building and a taxi cab drove up. And an elderly lady got out with a cane. And she says, are you the guy that talks about the toys? I said, yes ma'am, I am. She reached in to her purse and she pulled out an envelope. And she said, this is not a lot of money, but I want to make sure a child here in Batavia has a Merry Christmas. She says, it's only $5. I took a cab down here tonight, this afternoon, to make sure that a child here in Batavia had a Merry Christmas. And I can still remember a young girl coming to me it was only seven years of age. Knocked on the door and she says, are you Mr. Bailey? And I said, yes, I am. She says, today's my birthday. I says, okay. She says, I'm not here to get toys. She says, I had a party today. And she says, all the toys that I got for my birthday, I want to make sure a child in Batavia has those toys. What do you say to a six or seven year old girl that's from Batavia that wants to make sure that every child has a Merry Christmas? Batavia, I want to say one thing to you tonight because it was Batavia folks that made this happen. I want you to say, don't thank the Baileys don't thank the Dubuses. Look in the mirror tomorrow morning and thank 
yourself for helping out your neighbor. The person that couldn't have a Christmas if you didn't step up and make them have a Christmas. So I leave you with that tonight. It's a Merry Merry Christmas to Batavia. Proud to be a Batavian. As I've said to some of the Aldens prior to this, once a Batavian, always in a Batavian. And I can tell you that this year is a record year for families, a record year for children that we took care of. As you looked on those on the, the screen tonight, you saw all the offerings that everybody gave. And it all started right here in every Batavia family. We need to thank you. We need to thank Batavia. Good night. Thank you. Well, I think everybody in the council now has a, you know, I, I know you all had it before, but you, you got a recommitment to what this is all about and what success we do have with this. So, uh, and it's funny, I've had some of my fellow peers in the Chicago and region hear about it in the last few weeks and have asked me about how do you do this? How much ta tax dollars do you commit to this? And I say, well, we don't commit tax dollars to it. It's all by the community donated out of their hearts and souls. So I think it speaks well for, <coughs> as has already been said, what Batavia is all about and the spirit that it lives on here and continues to live. And things like this action, I think, just cause that spirit to grow and prosper and be brighter. So we have a lot to be thankful for in Batavia. All right, moving back to the agenda. Uh, we have next thing is seven matters from the public for items not on the agenda. Do we have anybody this evening that wants to talk about something we don't have on the agenda? All right, next thing then is item eight, which is a report from the Batavia Chamber of Commerce. And Margaret Perot, our executive director and president, is here. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. I'm Margaret Perot, the executive director of the Batavia Chamber of Commerce. I put a little PowerPoint together today. Let me just click on that. All right. Uh, we have a lot of upcoming events, but before I get to them, I did want to make sure that everybody got their community guide, their membership directory. It just came out uh, the first week of December of January. Sorry, it lists all of our uh, chamber members, all the members that have invested in our community, and is a great resource. So if you need any services or contacts or uh, to be able to find businesses, this is a great resource to hang on to throughout the year. So if you didn't receive it, let me know. We have extra copies at the chamber. I'm also going to put copies upstairs so you could reach them. You could get yours at City Hall. Main Street will also have some. We'll have some at the library. And we will also have some at the Park District. So this the Batavia Community Guide, Community Guide and Membership Directory great resource. I do want to give a shout out to Sarah Anderson. She's our high school intern at the at the chamber. This is her um, creative work, the cover guide. So if you see Sarah, give her a shout out. Tell her it's beautiful. <laughs> so some of the events that we have coming up tomorrow, uh, no, I'm sorry, on Wednesday, January 8th, we have our not-for-profit forum. That's a group that meets monthly that are leaders of not-for-profits in the area that uh, give each other advice and speak on issues uh, and find ways to help each other. On Wednesday, January 8th at 7.30 a.m., we have our Batavia Chamber, Chamber Breakfast Club. That's our stru structured networking that we host monthly at Comfort Inn and Suites. That is for anyone to attend. So if you want to build an image for your business, come join us. Uh, on January 15th, Wednesday, the third Wednesday of each month, we host our not for or our networking it for a cause. So we will be hosting networking it at Pal Joey's this time on January 15th at a new time. Our networking previously was from 5 to 7. We've moved it up a little bit. So now it's from 4.30 to 6.30. So if you want to get to know local business owners, come join us at our networking. We're also spotlighting Batavia RSVP. They're a service organization that provides services for seniors in our community. So we're going to let them talk about their mission at our networking event. 
on January 16th, we're hosting our third in a series. It is Workplace Safety Program. Sorry, I'm going a little quickly. Uh, I don't have a flyer on that one, but that is one that's an educational program featuring um, that we're hosting at Water Street Studios that talks about being prepared in an active shooter situation. So it discusses being calm and how to be able to help others if there ever is a situation that you're involved in. On January 23rd is an exciting event that's a ribbon cutting for Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. It, and that's their grand opening day. I think their events start at 8.30, but the chamber is hosting the ribbon cutting at 9 a.m., so please join us Thursday, January 23rd. Then, oh, the, sorry. And then we have another ribbon cutting that's coming up on January 31st. It's a Friday at noon. We're celebrating the new location and the opening of Six Plus Cypress on the east side of town now. So join us for that. That's at noon. Our big event that's coming up is our Inspire Award ceremony, where we celebrate those in the community that inspire us. We will ho be hosting that at Abbey Farms, January 23rd at 6 p.m. Registration is required, but everyone is invited, so please go to our website to register. We will be honoring Nan Phillips, our 2019 Citizen of the Year Award recipient. You may know Nan because she was an LRC director at Hoover Woods. She's a member of the Batavia Women's uh, Women's Club. She is active with Beefy. Uh, she was instrumental in the creation of the BHS Hall of Honor. She was on the board of the Batavia Fire Protection Board of Trustees. And you probably know Nan from anywhere else because she contributes her time and talents in many, many areas. So we will be giving her the Citizen of the Year Award. We will be honor honoring Chip In for their um, significant contributions that they've made to our community. At Inspire, we will also be giving out six OLE awards, which are awards that we give to businesses that have increased the economic viability of our town. Those six recipients are Alpha Goma, Bocadito's Cafe, Dance Dynamics, Riverside Pizza and Pub, Funway, and Redant Industrial Center. These are businesses that completed their construction or renovations by um, in 2019 or prior to our picking the award. I think it's uh, the end of June is our cutoff, so we'll be honoring those businesses. And this new this year, we're going to be unveiling our Batavia Chamber Inspire Scholarship Program. We're going to be raising funds to award scholarships to four Batavia High School seniors, one in each of the following areas. We're going to honor one that is called Inspiring Women in Business to encourage female students to study business as a career or as a major because we find that they're they are underrepresented underrepresented in the business field. We are going to have a scholarship for inspiring career and technical achievers for students interested in trade or a career in manufacturing. We will have a scholarship titled Inspiring Contributor to a Batavia Chamber Business to a student who has worked at a Batavia Chamber member during their high school years for at least a year. We will also be giving out an inspire, inspiring entrepreneurship scholarship to a student who has an entrepreneurial spirit and may open a business in Batavia someday. So we're doing a fun paddle raise at our Inspire Award ceremony to raise funds at Inspire. So come join us. If you'd like to contribute to any of these scholarships, please contact me at the chamber, 630-879-7134. Or you can email me, margaret at pataviachamber.org. And for any students to complete the application and for details, please vis visit our website, pataviachamber.org. Also new this year is uh, the Chamber is partnering with St. Charles Chamber and G the Geneva Chamber to offer a travel package to Tuscany in October. This amazing trip to scenic Italy will include seven nights at a first-class hotel and beautiful daily excursions from Tuscany. If you're interested in this, plan, in this please plan on attending our informative kickoff. Ah, uh, missed a couple of these. <laughs> uh, our informative kickoff meeting held at Aqua Viva on February 13th, Thursday, from 5.30 to 6.30. We'll be talking about what is part of this package with the trip to Tuscany. But we think it'll be a great offering to our to anyone. It's not just chamber members, it's av available to everyone. 
Now I would like to introduce you to a current and truly amazing woman in business. Angela Morris is the owner of Assisting Hands Home Care Fox Valley South. Assist Assisting Hands provides personalized non-medical support services in home, assisting the elderly needing support to maintain quality of life. We are thankful to have Angela for host having her business in Batavia and in our community. I would like Ange to invite Angela to come up and talk about her business. Please help me welcome up Angela. Thank you. I didn't even have the PowerPoint ready to go. Um, thank you, Margaret, and thank you for um, to the Batavia Chamber for inviting me this evening. Uh, good evening to, um, and thank you, Mayor uh, and the council members for allowing me to speak today. I'll make it very brief. Again, as Margaret mentioned, my name is Angela Morris, and I own uh, Assisting Hands Home Care. We're located at 115 Flint Street, Suite A in Batavia, and our phone number is 630 630-454-4880. We provide in-home care or facility care to elderly and disabled individuals. There is no age minimum or age limit, however. Our services do include anything non-medical, such as bathing, dressing, grooming, uh, meal preparation, medical uh, medication reminders, ambulation and transportation, companionship, light housekeeping, fall prevention, and dementia care. We essentially allow individuals to stay within their homes for as long as they choose. And again, we are uh, located in downtown Batavia. We have been, we're going on our fourth year of business and uh, we love being in Batavia and servicing the community and surrounding communities. We do provide service 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year. And we can provide services for anywhere from four hours to 24 hours to live in. Uh, under certain circumstances, we can provide less than four hours uh, of care. It's tailored to the needs of the client. And um, uh, we pretty much can accommodate any, any need uh, within our uh, location and our territory. Our agency is licensed by the state of Illinois. And our caregivers are insured and bonded. They're employed by us. They are not general contractors. They're covered by our liability and workers' compensation insurance. And um, just a little bit about what sets us apart from other home care companies. Um, we are, to my knowledge, the only five-star rated Google uh, home care company located in Batavia. Um, and we have won the 2019 Provider of Choice and Employer of Choice as, uh, as administered by Home Care Pulse, a third party uh, rating agency. In addition to providing services to our clients, we do employ quite a few uh, people in Batavia and the surrounding communities. So uh, if there's anyone that you know of that can provide or is looking to get into uh, providing home care, in-home care. Uh, we do provide competitive wages, uh, flexible working hours, and benefits to all of our employees as well. We do have a website, uh, assisting, I'm sorry, assistinghands.com slash Batavia is our website, and you can see either employment on that website or care uh, seek care uh, either either way and we do provide a free and home assessment and we can usually schedule that uh, either same day or within a day or two off uh, a client reaching out to us so again if anyone uh, knows of anyone who needs our services we're happy to to accommodate Batavia uh, is um, 
has been very um, welcoming to our business. Uh, we provide services to a lot of our clients within this community, and we're very happy to be here, happy to be a part of the, the chamber. Uh, the chamber has been um, a wealth of resources for, for our business and for networking, and we cannot be happier uh, to be a member of the Batavia Chamber of, of Commerce as well. Thank you very much, and thank you for your time. Well, thank you, and welcome to our community. All right, uh, moving to item number nine, which is, as you know, we have a couple of appointments. At this time, I'd like to ask for a confirmation of my appointment of Jamie Som to be a member of the Batavia Historic Preservation Commission. So moved. Second. Moved by Alderman Wolf, second by Alderman Knopp. Any discussion? Call the roll. Wolf. Aye. Barron. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Callahan. Aye. Meitzler. Aye. Moet. Aye. Ewer. Aye. Cerrone. Aye. McFadden. Aye. Miller. Aye. Rosado. Aye. Beck. Aye. Knopp. Aye. Chancet. Aye. Appointment is confirmed by a vote of 14 yes, no, no, is none absent. Secondly, we have an appointment of Jennifer Rest to the Batavia Bicycle Commission. Can we make that a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Alderman Beck, second by Alderman Ray for the approval of Jennifer Rest to the Batavia Bicycle Commission. Any discussion? Her call the roll. Beck. Aye. Knopp. Aye. Chancet. Aye. Wolf. Aye. Barron. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Callahan. Aye. Meitzler. Aye. Malay. Aye. Ewer. Aye. Cerrone. Aye. McFadden. Aye. Miller. Aye. Rosado. Aye. Motion's approved. 14 yes, no no's, none absent. Moving to item number 11, we're going to have a proclamation tonight uh, commemorating the 100th anniversary of the Batavia League of Women Voters. And before we do, um, we're going to have Alderman Chance, do you have a copy of this to read? I do not. I, have okay, I just want to say before we present this that as an organization that's been at the heart and soul of our town for 100 years, the Batavia League of Women Voters has been there. And there's been so many times, if you think back, you know, where were we 100 years ago? Uh, we were at the beginning of 1920, and World War I had just come to a conclusion, and there was a lot of things happening. Women had just gotten the right to vote, and there was a whole bunch of other things that were kind of kicking into American history. And if there's been an organization that has stepped up in this past century and really done some stuff to make us more aware of what the world is all about and how it functions within our community and the greater world beyond, uh, I can think of no other in this town that's done as much to try to educate and lead and take our vision to a, a broader one as a community than the Batavia League of Women Voters. They have really stepped up and really have taken a leadership role on so many subjects, many of which were controversial, many of which, you know, were had the community rocking and rolling in a lot of different ways. Uh, but the league was always there, and as far as I can always tell, they were always on the right side of the issue. And uh, they were always there at times when, uh, you know, Batavia uh, needed somebody to really keep an eye on things. And I can remember in 1966 when it was announced that the, that the then what they called the NAL, NAL, the National Accelerator Laboratory, was going to be built to the east of Batavia. Uh, who was it that stepped up and really kind of put their face into it and tried to lead it with some some positive direction, but the then members of the League of Women Voters, most of which are not with us anymore, but uh, they were the ones that got in and said, you know, as a community, we really need to make sure that housing opportunities are over for everybody, open for everybody, and that didn't come without a great degree of debate and discussion. But the League was there at the leadership role of that one. Uh, the league was there when they started having discussions about just how much Fermi Lab was going to then Im impair themselves into Batavia, specifically on the east side. And I think they were very loud voices in that discussion. And at the, when it was all over and said and done, uh, Batavia, I think, came out a real winner in that whole thing because of all the things that have happened here. Probably the arrival of Fermi Lab had, had, has had one of the more positive impacts of anything that's ever happened in Batavia. And again, the League of Women Voters was at the forefront of that. So as I was preparing this proclamation, which I had been given some of the language to put in, I 
I thought, well, I, I think I would probably just be better making my own speech as the mayor about what the League of Women Voters has meant to this town and say it publicly and so everybody that's listening can hear it, uh, that this has been a wondrous organization. Uh, they have always, their heart has always seemingly been in the right place. And if there's been somebody that truly has made a difference for the better, betterment of our town, it has been the Batavia League of Women Voters. So, A proclamation, whereas on February 14th, 1920, the League of Women Voters was formed at the Co Congress Hotel in Chicago, Illinois, and whereas the League was formed six months prior, but in anticipation of ratification of the 19th Amendment, giving women the right to vote in the United States, and whereas the League was a political experiment designed to help 200 million women carry out new responsibilities as voters by educating them about issues, and whereas from the beginning, the League determined that it would be nonpartisan, neither supporting nor opposing any political party or individual candidate, and whereas the League continues today as a nonpartisan political organization, that encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. And whereas today the League is composed of members in over 200 local, county, and state leagues in all 50 states, plus the District of Columbia, the Virgin Islands, and Hong Kong, whereas among those state leagues, is the League of Women Voters of Illinois that was incorporated on March 22nd, 1920, and in turn is composed of over 40 local leagues with almost 4,000 members. And whereas among those local leagues in Illinois, it is the League of Women Voters of Central Kane County. And whereas members of the League first study and then take action on a broad range of issues after reaching consensus on positions. And whereas leagues at all levels, among other activities, register voters, educate voters by holding candidate forums and publishing voter guides, publish public policy research and hold meetings on key issues, and whereas the League is a civic organization that has fought since 1920 to improve government and engage everyone in the decisions that impact their lives, and whereas the League will celebrate its 100th anniversary on February 14, 2020. Now, therefore, I, Jeffrey D. Schilke, Mayor of Batavia, do hereby proclaim Friday, February 14th, uh, 2020, as League of Women Voters Day in the city of Batavia, and encourage all citizens of Batavia to celebrate a democracy where every person has the desire, the right, the knowledge, and the confidence to participate. Signed uh, by Mayor Jeffrey D. Schilke. Uh, Your Honor, I would move the, we approve the proclamation as read. Second. Move by Alderman Chancet, second by Alderman Metzler for the approval of the proclamation honoring the 100th birthday of the League of Women Voters. Any discussion? Or call the roll. Chancet? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Barron? Aye. O'Brien? Aye. Callahan? Aye. Meitzler? Aye. Molay? Aye. Ewer? Aye. Cerrone? Aye. McFadden? Aye. Miller? Aye. Rosado? Aye. Beck? Aye. Knopp? Aye. <coughs> Motion is approved 14 yes, no no's, none absent. I see we got a group here. You all want to come up? <laughs> I know it's small. <laughs> do, We're do Central you, King County. Are you the now. spokesman? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, certainly on behalf of the city of Batavia and the Batavia City Council and myself, we want to present you this proclamation. And we, as I've already said, uh, you have really made a difference for many years. I guess our, it would be our hope and prayer that this will continue for another hundred years. Uh, you'll hand this off, organization off to younger generations who will continue to go forth because I'm sure that the public policy problems of the world are not going to go away. They're probably going to get even <laughs> more intensified than they are in the past. The importance of a group like yours is second to none. So I really appreciate and encourage everything that goes on here. And on behalf of the citizens of Batavia, thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. For a great run here. And if you'd like to take We're hosting a candidates forum <laughs> on January 30th here for the 14th Congressional District. 
the 25th State Senate District, the 49th and 65th State Illinois State Representative District. Then we're hosting on February 6th here at Batavia City Hall, Kane County contested races. We couldn't do what we do without the support of all of you in Batavia. We so feel honored to be acknowledged tonight, but you guys opened the door for us to be able to do what we can do. So I want to thank you very much for what you do. And we'll see you at the next Aldermanic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tossed, so. But thank you very much. And thank you, Mayor. All right, moving then to, we've already done away with 13, so we'll move to 14, which is a presentation of the Batavia Public Schools 101 Hall of Honor nomination submittals. And we have a familiar face in a new role. My name is Holly Deachman. I am the communications manager at the Batavia Public School District, but today I am here to represent the Hall of Honor Committee. The in 2020, the Batavia Public School District will be hosting its sixth annual Hall of Honor ceremony, and that is on Thursday, October 1st at the Batavia Fine Arts Center. I'm here to ask you all to submit someone as a nominee for the next Hall of Honor. Um, our own Mayor Jeffrey D. Schelke, uh, as a Batavia High School alumni, was inducted into the inaugural uh, Hall of Honor ceremony in 2015. There have been several others. There's multiple that are inducted every year, um, but some of the more notable or famous ones of course, Mayor Schelke being the numero uno in that category. Um, we have also had Ken Anderson, who was a Cincinnati Bengal, Dan Issel, a Denver Nugget. I'm kind of a Michigan Nugget myself, but um, Don Kramer, former sheriff of King County. Um, <laughs> Margaret Perot had my notepad, so she wrote her name on the list. Um, she is not a BHS alum, though she would be able to be honored as an inductee as a community friend of the Batavia Public School District since she has 12 children that have all gone through the school district, or four, whatever. Seems like a lot. Um, Craig Sager, who is quoted as being America's sideline reporter. Um, Tim Schmidt, who was on the plan commission here in Batavia, and Alderman and Illinois House representatives. So um, our nominations are due on February 1st. We have multiple categories, um, BHS alumni, someone that has graduated from Batavia High School at least 15 years ago um, for personal achievement. Uh, someone that's a BHS alumni that has done great service to our community, also 15 years out of school. A non-alumni or friend of Batavia, which Margaret would qualify for, or a District 101 staff person that may have impacted the life of your child or someone that you know within the district. Uh, they have to have served as a staff member for at least 10 years. Um, the nominations can be completed online at bps101.net forward slash BPS Hall of Honor, or you can print off and drop off at our central admin office, which is at 335 West Wilson Street. Of course, if you have any questions at all about how to nominate, if someone qualifies, that Hall of Honor page on our website lists um, all the criteria for that as well. Um, or you can just call me at 
8800. That's the main line to the school district offices and would be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Um, but again, all of those that are nominated are reviewed by our committee, a nominations committee that reviews them um, soon after the deadline in February. And then um, those are then selected for this year's and honored in October. That's all I have for you tonight. I know I have extra time. If you want, I can tell some jokes. Mm -hmm. All these other presentations went short, so there's a lot of extra time. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> well, we thank you for uh, coming down and putting it public that you're seeking nominations. And we wish the very best of success in this year's selection process. And thank you for putting this all together. The Batavia School District continues to shine on a lot of fronts. and. Certainly under your leadership, the public outreach of it, I think it will rise to new heights. So, um. Well, thank you very much, Mayor Schelke. Okay, moving then to the administrator's report. Laura? Good evening and Happy New Year. Um, it is going to be a very, very busy year here in the city of Batavia. Uh, first, I wanted to share with you just the large number of capital projects that we will have going on here in the city of Batavia that show um, both a, a dedication to um, improving the infrastructure within this city, um, the city's efforts to pursue grant money in order to assist with those capital projects. And then just also a demonstration of how we always want to um, take care of those assets with which we have been entrust entrusted as a public entity. Um, Prairie Street reconstruction, um, we have uh, the... Uh, I'd say the southern half of that project is going to uh, begin later this year. Um, but we just learned that the other phase of the project late last year received federal funding. And so we'll be able to signalize the intersection of Prairie and Wilson Street, which we do expect that signalizing that, that intersection may have a positive impact on the traffic flow as it proceeds. Um, you know, we, we do have those times of day when there are backups on Wilson Street. And it will be interesting to see whether that has a positive influence on that. Um, in both of those cases, we will also be looking at water main replacement as we're um, doing a complete reconstruction of that roads. It makes sense to replace the water infrastructure below those roads that are from about the 1930s. So they're about due. Um, in Ward 1, this coming year, we're going to, um, this will be the second to last year for the Ward 1 um, water infrastructure, stormwater um, infrastructure improvements that are being made in there. And also Area 3, this is the last year. But both of those projects are projects that are aimed at addressing flooding issues that existed in our uh, community. We will also see the replacement of a 23-year-old uh, fire engine and also uh, renovations that will be made here at the Government Center that are for security and efficiency. We'll also be repairing the roof at the Public Works facility, hoping to get another 30 years out of that. Um, and also completing the rebuild of our Paramount substation, which feeds our Northeast Industrial Corridor. And you can keep up with all of these projects and more um, on our website. There is a page for the capitals, the city's capital projects as well. Um, if you sign up for the weekly e-newsletter, there's a place right on our homepage where you can click there and put in your email address. Um, every week, we will send you an update on where these projects stand and also a link to those and also other uh, projects that are going on in the city. It's a really great way to keep up to date on information that residents are both interested in and that um, you really need to know. 
Um, you noticed that the flag was in the wrong place for our Pledge of Allegiance today, and that's because we're having some work done here in council chambers. Um, you might have noticed that we have larger screens available for us tonight. As well, we replaced the 12-year-old projectors that were in this room so that uh, people standing at the podium can just about read what's on the screen, which is really exciting. But we're sort of mid-project right now because um, we also, uh, as part of the project, there will be a screen that is part of this podium to assist presenters. And then there'll also be a monitor which will be hung over the crowd um, back here so that it makes it abundantly easy for those sitting in the audience also to see what is being presented on these screens. So all of this represents a significant improvement in our ability to clearly communicate what's um, going on at the city council meetings, not only with people sitting in the rooms, but the upgrade was also necessary because of upgrades that BATV made to their equipment. Um, the old projectors didn't have the ability for the BATV equipment to pick up the feed from those projectors, but now these new projectors do have that ability so that BATV can flip a switch and show people who are tuning in at home um, that uh, what is being presented on these screens. So improving our transparency so that uh, we can have maximum participation. Staff had a conference call with the Illinois Department of Natural Resources last week, and IDNR confirmed to us that they have renewed their uh, funding for the low head dam removals on the Fox River. And so they encouraged us to uh, work with the other, the other powers that be, such as the Park District, to um, move forward with determining what our future plans uh, would be if we were to receive funding for removal of that dam. So we will keep you posted on that. The next step in the process, um, our internal staff and park district staff plan to meet to uh, discuss how to proceed with that project. Um, also, we're encouraged that Shodin has been asking for information to supplement its application for financing for the One Washington Place project. We're really taking this as a positive, some positive evidence that the project is now finally proceeding toward groundbreaking in this coming year. And uh, that being said, we are eager to work with both the Chamber of Commerce as well as our Main Street organization um, to find ways to minimize the impact that that construction project will have on our local businesses. Um, we have some amazing uh, businesses that uh, have been there for a number of years, but also very new businesses that have come to our community within the last several years. And during the uh, holiday shopping, um, we really noticed a lot of that these businesses were attracting more and more people to our downtown. We want to make sure that that continues to happen throughout the year. So we'll work on projects and ways to encourage people to continue to patronize those businesses so that they're here for a long time to come. Um, also, the 2020 biz, uh, budget has now been printed. If you would like a hard copy of that, you can stop by City Hall at the receptionist desk Monday through Friday during normal business hours and obtain a copy. But of course, the budget is also available electronically on the city's website. You just go to the Finance Department page and you'll see it right there. As well, the city is in the process of producing a budget in brief, which seeks to take the phone book like volume that is our uh, detailed budget information and put it into a more digestible um, documents. Uh, if ever there's any questions about the budget, uh, feel free to contact um, the city of Batavia. You can either contact me as the city administrator or Peggy Colby as our finance director, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that anybody has about the city budget. Also, we wanted to let people know that the Committee of the Whole will be revisiting its prior discussion about whether the city should allow recreational cannabis dispensaries next Tuesday, January 14th. Um, also on that agenda will be approval of the grant agreement for Main Street to, constru to construct the boardwalk shops at the Art Stop parking lot. 
Lastly, um, if there's anybody who still has any cris uh, crispy Christmas trees left in their home, I wanted to talk about Christmas tree pickup. Um, these Advanced Disposal will be picking up live Christmas trees on residents' regular collection dates. On the um, south side, that will be on uh, Wednesday, January 8th. On the north side, in this boundary by uh, Wilson Street between Kirk and Randall. On the north side, that Thursday, January 9th. And on the far west side, um, Randall west to the city limits on Friday, January 10th. So if, you, if you're like me and you haven't put your Christmas tree out yet, definitely get that out there on those days. Um, you, can, uh, you don't need to have a sticker for Christmas tree removals on those dates only. After that date, you would have to use a refuse sticker to place the tree out on your regular collection date. All materials like plastic bags, ornaments, lights, nails, etc., should be removed from the trees and live reeds and garlands should be placed in your regular refuse. And that's all I have, unless anybody has any questions. Well, Alderman O'Brien. A couple of questions. Yes. Uh, One Washington Place. Has the developer of Shodine, have they uh, authorized any planned development to move forward with plans? Uh, we, they said that they are working on plans as we speak and that uh, I think they are expecting to submit sometime in February. Okay, I mean, which is critical. It's, it's yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're all working on some pretty tight uh, time schedules. We regularly communicate about those, and thus far, things seem to be according to schedule. Good. And the, uh, the, the new Public Works roof, we put on a few years ago, we put on some solar panels. We're mm -hmm. going to maintain those solar panels. Yes, we are. Yes, this is simply the installation of um, a new membrane that is going to uh, prevent us from having to do a complete roof uh, uh, removal and an application of a new roof. This is going to make the existing roof, we hope, last another 30 years. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, going to committee reports, uh, community development. Uh, nothing for tomorrow and nothing on historic preservation or plan. Okay. Uh, government services. Chance. Um, we do have some items uh, regarding wages and salaries, some housekeeping items. Okay. A city services, or the Wolf? Uh, the one item that's on for tomorrow night we'll actually be removing. That's going to be moved to the 14th for the really big fun meeting. Okay. Public utilities, or Mr. Ryan? Uh, Your Honor, we have nothing for the month of January. Okay. Uh, we have other business from the council. Any Alderman Burr? Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how we're supposed to go about this, but um, a resident reached out to me that they, um, their current situation is they're uh, renting a duplex right now. Um, the owner of the duplex is going to be selling it. In the meantime, he has only space to fit two cars in his driveway, and he has been constantly doing the overnight parking uh, request. Um, he is going to actually be moving and buying a house in June in Batavia, and he has three cars, and he would just like to be able to, instead of having to shuffle them and request a different car every three nights, which is just time-consuming, and he forgot once, so he ended up having to pay a ticket. He would just like to be able to register it until June, or maybe we just do like a month at a time or something in order to allow him to get to that point that he buys a house and then has plenty of room for his cars. So... I don't know exactly the process we have to do. I know we have to approve it as a council because it is an exception to the uh, existing ordinance. That's it. Yeah. I mean, I would be hesitant to start telling everybody you can just start parking on the street overnight. That would be a very problematic issue very quickly. Yeah, I'm not saying that. I just wanted to, considering his circumstances, he's about to become a, a full-time, you know, tax-paying resident. I mean, there's a process you can go through that you obviously must have researched it. Yep. I would encourage him to do that, but I don't, I would not encourage us to start looking at letting everybody park on the street all night. I'm not saying that. I'm just looking for an exception for this. I've been there before this. on that one, and it, that, that raises all kinds of different issues. I'm not saying to change the ordinance. I'm just saying if we have to vote on an exception or what is that? Yeah, or is it just me bringing it up and... Find out, 
I was say, Your Honor, I believe that, um, I had this only once before. I had a resident approach me, and I thought that we approved a very temporary, as like a two-month right. kind of exemption thing. And this seems appropriate in that right. case. We should probably refer that to committee right. For, right. for discussion then. But we bring it in, and so yeah. we make you go through the hoop, because sure. if we didn't, we would suddenly right. yep. have a whole bunch of No, agreed. Yeah, so I would join you. We should you join me in this. getting on committee? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It is. Anybody else? Uh, I just want to make a couple comments before we adjourn. Uh, I've been, as you all know, I've been here a long time, and I don't know if I've ever seen a time when we have seemingly so many people out kind of kicking the tire and and stopping by and asking a bunch of questions on a variety of fronts of, of different things, specifically new businesses in the downtown area. And we have a lot of that. I'm, I'm encouraged by what I see, uh, but they, a lot of them have you know, differing viewpoints on different stuff. Uh, the restaurant world seems to have found us, and there's uh, several folks that are here right now kind of circling the tire or whatever you want to call it, looking for spaces. And there's a couple of prominent spots in our downtown. There, there is some restaurants that have gone out of business or have been halted, and there's a lot of people in asking a lot of questions about can they do this or do that. So I just would suggest to you that Tuesday nights may suddenly become uh, conversation pieces of people with, and that some of this isn't easy questions, like uh, we've got one building in town that's got two drive through windows. And uh, it's been suggested to me that if you're a restaurant, you could use one of the drive through windows that's nearest the building because people could come down and they could pull right up to your the window and you could hand them the food. But a second window, which is next to it, which is used to be a cash station, that baby has no value to anybody. And so uh, we get into this and we find out that that's sitting on city property, I guess. Isn't that what we found out? Yeah. So, uh, and that's one of these deals back in the old days when we did things around here and we didn't always file agreements or pass things. We just we just did things. We we created a couple retention ponds out on Randall Road that are right now a bit of an interest to everybody. And the county uh, board seems to have had some role in this. Maybe not the county board. Maybe the county board chairman. And uh, there's there's retention ponds that don't seem to have any official life to them. They're just there. So I mean, we've got some of these things that are kind of hanging loose on us. So. We may find ourselves in, engrossed in conversations as things go on, but I've had a lot of people give me very positive re reactions to some of the new businesses, and uh, like Limestone Coffee and Tea, they're not a new business, but they've just had some need to put a new floor in and kind of spruce themselves up, and I'm hearing rave reviews about them, and the, the Red Hive, which is next to it, seems to be getting its own very interesting reactions to it. And Six Plus Cypress over on the east side. And I've had some other people in asking about other at what have been vacant storefronts in downtown Batavia for a long time. So I, I, I think we've kind of turned the corner on this, and it's all good problems to have. But they're, they're all probably going to have to require some amount of just as Alderman Err just read, made mention, we may have to adjust some ordinances here and there. And I will tell you the one where I'm going with this is uh, I'm, I'm in convening a, a meeting of uh, the city staff, specifically the police department, the community development, and Laura and, and Anthony and myself. Uh, we've got a lot of people asking about liquor licenses and specifically changing our portions of our liquor license to allow for different types of activities to occur. So I've been encouraging all these folks that are asking, uh, you know, such things as put, bringing in some kind of a performance theater, but also having a liquor license with it and stuff like that. So I'm suggesting to them all, will you kind of put into writing for me maybe something I could share with the city council as a liquor commissioner about what your idea is I've got another situation where we have some folks that own a beauty shop in town, and they want to create a uh, customer party room in the basement of this place in which they would open that up for baby showers and wedding showers and card clubs and whatever to come into this place, and they would have the ability to serve liquor. Now, we've already kind of done this in a couple of the places. Kay Hollis out on Randall Road 
has got a, a little bar in there, and it seems to work very successfully. Uh, we've got a grocery store in town that's asking about doing this, and you only have to go as far as St. Charles to find the Boo Goose, and they've got a a bar and ability to carry a glass of wine around the store while you're shopping. Uh, these are all ideas that I think Batavia is going to have to come to reality about as far as what we are going to do. So uh, just picking up on Laura's theme about this is going to be a busy year, there's, there's a lot of conversations out there that I'm getting right now from people, and none of it is bad stuff. I, I'm, I'm encouraged by what I'm hearing, but our liquor license right now doesn't allow some of this stuff in the in the fashion that's being proposed. So uh, I guess we're going to try to come back and maybe offer some re reformations or reforms to our liquor license, not to tighten it up so much as, but to allow certain other types of activities to inter intermingle with it and work with it. So uh, that's where we're going. So you'll be getting that one here sometime in the next few weeks. And as I say, we've got several other restaurants that are cogitating about wanting to come in and I certainly so far I've not heard anything from any one of them that I think would be a bad thing I'm encouraged <laughs> by some of the people who are stepping forward and telling me they want to be in the business and I'm hopeful that we can put all this together and make all this work so uh, just be ready because we're going to have some conversations about those types of issues and it, it's all good things for the downtown uh, it's, it really is. It's, uh, I think it really is speaking well to the direction it's heading. The other thing that Laura touched on is that we have been the recipients of, of quite a bit of federal money to help Batavia do some street work. And uh, there is some constraint with that. On, specifically, uh, the money we have for South Prairie Street and Main Street, uh, we have to have those projects physically in process by October of this year or we'll lose the money. And when I say that, I mean that's very seriously. And as you know, I serve as chairman in Chicago where all this money is coming from. And we've just gone through the first go-around where some towns had been playing around with stuff and hadn't gotten anything approved or plans drawn or right-of-way acquisitions done or whatever. And they lost the money, and the feds came in and said, it's off the table, let's find new projects to spend this money on. And we've just gone through that first rendition. So it's it's there and it's been done and so now this, this this process has been put into place where if you don't get this thing going now our, I think our engineering staff is on top of this and I think we're ready to put this all these on the way. The 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 Prairie and Wilson is one of these new projects that got thrown into the mix at the end because somebody didn't spend their money so. We we got some other we got some other folks money to put the Prairie and Wilson thing up, but or the traffic signal and the gate up, but we've got to we can't dilly dally on that. I guess is my message here. We've got to get that moving and get it going and show IDOT and the and the uh, National uh, Highway Administration who have their hands on this money that we're seriously doing it. It was pointed out to me that of all the railroad crossings we've got in the Chicagoland area with the numbers of cars that go over them, the Prairie Wilson one is one of the highest ones without a gate. And not that it, you know, there's not fast moving rail traffic through there, but just the fact that we've got those thousands of cars now going through that intersection, the powers that be want gates on the two legs of that intersection where there is the railroad crash tracks going across. It's kind of a unique intersection because it's four-way, but there's only two two legs of it that have railroad crossings in it. The other two don't. But so we're going to have to. The light's going to be a unique light there because when the train comes, everything's going to stop, uh, regardless of what lane you're in or where you're going. But that's just the way it's going to have to work. But there aren't that many trains there that come through. Maybe one or two a day at the most, and they're never very big, and they're sm smaller amounts of of traffic on it so uh, lot to talk about you'll be hearing all about it in the days ahead and I think our staff is under Laura's leadership we've got our handles on all this stuff and we know what we got to do uh, the other one that's big out there and I go to my mayor's meetings and everybody's got this in their faces this lead in the water pipes and there's all kinds of discussions about mandating some stuff and so far it really hasn't been done to any great degree 
But I, you know, all the stuff we've been doing here the last couple of years, we've been taking out the old pipe as, as we, opportunities presented. So we're having lesser and lesser amounts of that issue. But, you know, the day will probably come when we'll have to totally take it out. But hopefully we'll have a little bit of time. But the nice thing about it is we haven't really seen any indications that the pipe is impacting anybody on a negative basis. But most of the lead pipe we have in the ground uh, was put there before 1930, as Laura has just indicated. We got some of it that's now over 100 years of age, and it, it should be replaced just by the virtue of the age of itself. So uh, we've got a lot, a lot of stuff, stuff going. Uh, don't think you're going to come down here and sit here and not have anything to do. <laughs> Your Honor, so, yes. if, if I may say, uh, not to interrupt you, but just to comment on attributing the, the interest in, in our downtown, I think, you know, we've had a lot of discussions through the years on, on streetscapes, some heated discussions, and some heated discussions on, uh, on one Washington place. And I think the streetscapes kind of fed the, 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 the thought for one Washington place. And there were some heated discussions, but I believe our, the, the fruits of our labor is, is now coming forth that, you know, we have this interest in our downtown. And so, you know, kudos to the councils, I guess, for... All the input and arguments we've had. We so. uh, there used to be when on the Tonight Show they used to have a when they went to commercial they had a thing that came on that says more to come. <laughs> well, I think that may be Batavia's I, I agree. of the year because uh, we were talking about one Washington place, but that's not the only one that's out there. There may be more to come, and so we're going to have. Uh, a lot of stuff to talk about. So. Which, good stuff. Hey, good stuff. That's not bad. All right. Uh, Alderman Chanzit, you want to make a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. Move by Alderman Chanzit, second by Alderman O'Brien. Mm -hmm. uh, clerk, take a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.